Today's movie is guaranteed to crock your world. Man, we're getting started with the terrible puns early this week. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Gennetto De Rossi's Jaws ripoff, Killer Crocodile 2. De Rossi directed this sequel, which was shot at the same time as the first Killer Crocodile. As such, Anthony Crenna, Ennio Girolami, and the giant fake croc from the first movie all return for more man-eating mania, which is a win in my book. But enough about that. Can Killer Crocodile 2 devour enough people to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's movie is brought to you by patrons Brad Milne, Gene Fetterly, and Winter's Wrath. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's arbitrary community guidelines nonsense, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Seriously, every bit helps keep the show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. Sweet, light bright studio card. Say what you will, but this Fulvia Films intro is cool. Fabrizio DeAngelis is only presenting this time, not directing. And <laughs> wait a minute, is this a swerve opening in freeze frame? I think that's a show first. Hey, Anthony Crenna, aka I can't believe it's not Kenny Loggins is back. And Thomas Moore, aka Ennio Girolami trying to convince you he's American. <laughs> I like where this is headed. And that trend of Italians pretending to be Americans is going to be a recurring theme here in the credits. Here is Italian script writing AI Dardano Sacchetti, aka David Parker Jr. See? I wasn't kidding. Larry Ludman is none other than Fabrizio DeAngelis. Props to Gennetto De Rossi for being Italian and proud. Resort Alani back with the score. Probably not as good as the one in Cannibal Holocaust, but I'm not complaining. Here's Gennetto getting more props for his massive croc puppet. I loved it in the first one, and I bet it's awesome here too. Executive producer Roger Hack? I'm not gonna lie, that seems pretty on the nose given the quality of this film. And directed by Gennetto De Rossi, one of the great Italian FX wizards for sure. He passed back in 2021. Press F to pay respects. With the credit's over, let's see if we can sneak up on an interesting movie. Just be very quiet. You don't want to spook it. Oh god, are we going to recycle the wind sailing scene from Castellari's Great White for the hundredth time? Please god no. These guys are going to join them. You could say this is pretty fantastic. Oh boy, we got a killer croc sighting and not even three minutes in. I generally think surfing is pretty swell, but I'm not seeing any good waves out here. We'll say it's nice that he's basically just towing her along like she's chum, though. <laughs> and yeah, this music still sounds suspiciously like Jaws. God, watch out, you're getting the camera all wet. Next thing you know, Claire's overboard. It's nice of her to thrash around like a dying fish so the croc can find her more easily. Yeah, she's flailing around in these three inch swells in a part of the river that's like two feet deep. Acting. And now she's actively swimming away from being rescued. Then Claire goes down. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, something's pulling her underwater. With that finished, I guess we might as well boat over to another movie. I wonder if they're going to run into the crew of the first movie out here. At any rate, this dude's taking a bow. Literally. Meanwhile, these guys are having barrels of fun. Man, the Tonga kid looks weird without his mustache. Appears this is what happened to those chicks from the end of Megan is Missing. And with that, they're off. It's a boat time. <laughs> I probably deserve some stern looks for that one. Oh, hi there. Building establishing shot. I didn't think we were going to get any of those in a Killer Croc movie. Inside, this dude's getting a call. Hello? Larry Ludman speaking. After some more jibber-jabber, this dude's like, Look, I gotta run. My carriage is outside waiting for me. But first, let me check on what's in Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. Wait, all that was in there was an old Sports Illustrated and a racing form for the horses? Well, and that gun, but still. Talk about anticlimactic. Jesus, this guy's a walking dad cliche. Dad jeans, dad jacket so he doesn't catch a cold, and white new balances. 100 bucks says he drives a Corvette. Well, shit, he's clearly despondent about being in this movie. Don't jump, man. Life will get better. You have so much to live for. And now it's a bridge too far. Literally. Hey, how'd he get down there? It was just up on the bridge in the background. Ah, turns out he's a master of unlocking. Man, this movie is really big into the whole unlocking thing. Turns out he just circumnavigated all of this state-of-the-art security to get a sneak peek at a storage locker ahead of bidding on the next episode of Storage Wars. Aw oh, man, there's nothing but crap in here. He's about to head out, but then he's accosted by these other Storage Wars guys. They really want this unit. Yeah. 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 I knew the buying old storage units thing was competitive, but I didn't realize it was quite this cutthroat. And down goes Grandpa. Must not get blood 
on my new balances. So, Killer Crocodile 2 has given us one croc death and one shooting death. <laughs> I don't like that ratio. Since that was sort of exciting, let's slow things down by watching this train approach in real time. Giordano De Rossi didn't direct a ton of films, but clearly he learned how to pad from the masters. To prove my point, he follows that up with a building establishing shot. Man, he's hell-bent on establishing the shit out of this building. Inside, Lisa's late for work, and this chick is gonna let her know about it. Late again this morning, oh, Lisa? Meow. Lisa's not gonna take this sitting down. Your sense of humor leaves a lot to be desired. Well, I guess she is gonna take it sitting down since she's in a chair, but you knew what I meant. This movie sure is taking its sweet-ass time getting to the exciting parts, but Lisa says what I'm thinking. Take your time. I'm in no hurry. Oh, so this is where Judith Light worked on Who's the Boss. Wow, the crime problem here is out of control. Just stealing cars in broad daylight. Apparently, this is Lisa's car. And she catches him in the act and doles out a heaping helping of pimp purse. You could say that's a fate purse than death. Displeased with how the movie's going so far, everyone hops on a plane back to Italy. Sure, we can just watch it fly there in real time. Back at the office, this dude's outfit is a crime against fashion. Looks like it came right out of the Sears menswear section circa 1982. Jesus Christ, are we ever gonna get back to the Killer Croc? Clearly, Gennetto De Rossi booked an island flyover and used all the footage in the movie so he could write it off on his taxes. I mean, how cool would it be if this was the helicopter from the end of Day of the Dead about to land in another movie? Hey, wait a minute. This is the same footage they used for the opening credits of the first Killer Crocodile. Gennetto De Rossi, you sly dog, you. Nice, looks like veal is on tonight's menu. See, he looks hungry. These kids are clearly going to a swanky Catholic school. That probably makes this a scholarship. And I guess they didn't get the memo about not rocking the boat. It's like a Hughes Corporation song up in here. Do you know kids even remember the Hughes Corporation and rock the boat? Christ, I'm old. This kid's just a hop, skip, and a chomp away. Not gonna lie, looking like a seafood buffet out here right now. Also, I don't want to alarm anyone, but when are Anthony Crenna and Ennio Girolami going to finally show up? And since the croc has eaten several people now, I guess we can just wrap this up. Who's ready for the rap party? I guess Lisa was running late. Looks like she wore a nightgown to the party. Then she introduces herself. Miss Lisa Post from the New York Chronicle. This would have made more sense if she was Lisa Chronicle from the New York Post, honestly. But this guy's not done. He's also building a resort right here on Radioactive Killer Croc Island. What oh, could go wrong? Needless to say, the supporting character rap party isn't nearly as glamorous. Oh god, they caught the Geico Gecko, and this is an Italian movie. He's doomed. Meanwhile, Lisa's down here doing some investigative journalism. Yes, and she's not gonna find the killer croc here. But she is definitely moving up in the world. Upstairs, all she finds is this. To paraphrase Admiral Akbar, it's a tarp. I will say, it's nice everyone just leaves their toxic waste laying around so casually. No radioactivity, nothing. Well, yeah, that's because you're scanning those things with a voltmeter, which absolutely does not measure radiation. Now we're back in the woods. I'm not sure if this is actually from Killer Crocodile 2 or one of those Claudio Fragasso Red Brown action flicks. The fog says Fragasso. Oh yeah, this guy's a real genius, because he shoots the hornet's nest. I'm sure this is fine. At any rate, this dude really likes pumping his gun. Hell yeah. No, not like that, his shotgun. And the croc's like, hey, could you keep it down? Try to sleep over here. He flees and has gotten himself into another vine mess. Back at camp, chubby sweaty guy asks the question I've been waiting to ask for the past five minutes. Have you finished being an asshole? What's wrong now? And while he's regaling them with tales about this giant croc, surprise, land croc. Weirdest version of the three little pigs ever. I still love this giant fake crocodile, though. I mean, look at this thing. It's amazing. Nowadays, they just give you some shitty CGI croc and call it good. And apparently, he wants his leftovers to go. Oh man, look at this. His legs aren't even moving, but he's in reverse. God, I love this shit. All that's missing is a shot of the crew off camera pushing this thing into the water. I will say, I think Gilligan and the Skipper are gonna need a new hut. Ooh, look at this guy. What a ninja. From there, Lisa heads off to rent a boat. Judging by this guy's question, I'd probably keep looking. Where do you want to go? I mean, on the water seems like the obvious answer here. Not sure why he needed to ask. Over in another movie, Morton Downey Jr. relaxes between episodes of his wildly popular talk show. I love these two extraneous characters standing by his side. They're like some lost 80s R&B duo. Could be Ashford and Simpson, or Billy D. Williams and Claire Huxtable. Oh god, now she's trying to use the voltmeter on water. Science. 
Yep, no electricity here. Ah, great, the camera swam through the seaweed again, but we can't afford to reset for another take, so just leave it there. Man, I can't even get a signal out here. We're gonna miss Mr. Magic's rap attack. Also, is it just me, or is she way overdressed for a trip to the swamp? Yeah, this croc swims like a tank. I think he's about to sink. <laughs> Look at this dude. He's like, it's my duty to check out that booty. And apparently he's ready to go for a swim. He's stripping down to his trunks. Lisa's not having it though. Look, you seem like a pretty slice guy, so don't make me cut you. He's picked a terrible time to take a dip though, because this guy's already in the water. I've got a feeling Pedro here is about to become half the man he used to be. And now it's coming for Lisa. Just insert your own yanking hell yeah gag here. That's all pretty exciting, but what would be even more exciting is cutting away to a hotel establishing shot. Hey, look, Anthony Crenna finally decided to join us. Oh, budget Kenny Loggins here is entering the danger zone. I will say it's pretty wild to get top billing in a movie and not show up at all for the first 40 minutes. Excuse me, has Michael McDonald checked in already? We've got rehearsals in an hour. Is Lisa Post in the hotel? Whoa, they got Ted Russoff to dub Anthony Crenna. Why? I mean, I'm always up for some Rusoff, but Krenna could probably have handled the English dub. With that squared away, he's out here taking a boat over to Pooh Corner. Deep cut Loggins reference there. <laughs> Look at this. Krenna's such a badass, he rides around on his very own shark. I guess the cameraman is a real backseat boater, too. <laughs> oh shit, here comes the flashback. Here he doesn't look so much like Loggins as he does Torgo on vacation. Must get the beach house ready for the master. Lisa looks like she stumbled into a Guns N' Roses song out here in the bush. Stock footage snake. And now she's cramming these bananas in her mouth. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I mean she's eating bananas. Yeah, this is why you don't wear a skirt to the jungle. She may be unhappy about her plight, but this guy is feeling froggy. Hey, it's Joe. Maybe we can finally get this movie rolling now that it's half over. Clearly Joe retired from hunting crocs to work on starting his own J&B distillery. <sighs> um, Joe, why does this taste like toxic waste straight through old gym socks? Well, since you're here, might as well come in. Don't mind the mess, I'm still renovating. I haven't gotten the new dirt floor in yet. After some jibber jabber, we get to watch Joe shave a nut. Hell yeah. No, I mean he's using this knife to skin this coconut or whatever the hell it is. And now it's basically morphing into Jaws 2, which makes sense since the first film was basically Jaws. What the hell are you trying to tell me? There's another one, Joe. Another son of a bitch. Pretty sure that's a J&B bottle in the back. Better drink just in case. Reunited and it feels so good. Um, Janetto, do we have to watch them boat the whole way there? We could edit this out, right? Yeah, still boating. This is probably where Kenny developed his affinity for Yacht Rock. Look, I don't want to say the onset accommodations for the actors in this movie were terrible, but we couldn't even get Deborah Carr her own trailer. She's just doing her makeup outside. Oh hi, remember me? I'm still in this movie. I gotta think if Lisa just keeps traipsing through the jungle, she's bound to run into the chick from the end of Cannibal Ferox sooner or later. Or this guy. Meanwhile, Kenny's croc sense is tingling. What is it, kid? I don't know. Then they pick the worst time ever to cool off with a swim. Oh yeah, things are looking pretty bad for Joe. Either that or someone's mixing up an industrial sized vat of cherry Kool-Aid here. But surprise, you can't kill Joe. Didn't you guys watch the first movie? But he does have some parting advice for Kenny. You have to kill that bastard. Look, I know he's dying, so he probably can't get enough air to do this right, but show him how it's done, Linda Day George. Bastard! Bastard! Really, this is all very Shakespearean. He's floating away like Ophelia. And now it's time for another great moment in horror film acting. I'll kill him, Joe! I swear to God! I swear to God, I'll kill him! But before he can do that, he needs a new sidekick. Luckily, he's found Lisa. Um, why are they rowing? The motor worked fine in the last scene. Maybe they ran out of gas filming all those shots of Joe and Kenny boating earlier. At any rate, this is pretty awful. Things are getting steamy here in the jungle because Lisa's all wet. Hell yeah. No, I mean she's wet in the water because she's serving as bait for the croc, you pervs. With her back on board, she and Kenny can have a little heart to heart. Man, who's ready for more boating? Now we've got these guys. All they find is the destroyed hut. But I'm sure this is no big deal. Um, is this guy like seven foot tall? Is he standing on a box? Are these other two guys 5'2"? 
This is weird. Kenny and Lisa are back at Joe's place. I don't think he'd mind me bringing a chick here. I mean, he's not going to need the place for the foreseeable future. Oh, God, she wants him to motorboat her. I don't mean drive her around in the boat. Way to go, Kenny Loggins. You could say this is it. Over in our other movie, these guys are going to dock the boat. I sure hope they don't succumb to peer pressure. I feel like at least half of this movie has basically just been watching people pleasure boat up and down the river. Back at Joe's place, this happens. I see you managed to help yourself. Um, why does Joe own a woman's sports bra? Kenny, what did I tell you about taking a dump in our cooking pod? Go out in the river. Dude's clearly getting enough fiber. And we gotta get a bigger boat, too. Hey, that line sounds familiar. I'm calling Universal. I feel like this might be all the male members of the Jets. Crush on you was a jam. And if you guessed they were gonna find a killer croc, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. I've spent 12 hours on this script already, and Kenny says exactly what I'm thinking. We gotta get cracking. And he's got questions. What do they want? Me. Well, someone certainly has a high opinion of herself. That's okay. Kenny's gonna nag her. No. We'll say it's nice. The croc is just swimming around waiting for the climax to start. Jesus, just what this movie needed. More random boaters. You do realize we're eight minutes from the end, right? No idea what perspective lets the croc look at its own tail while it swims, but okay. Oh no, get in the water. Too bad it wasn't Bob. Don't worry, Kenny's gonna lasso this kid like it's stampede days. Hey, has this croc been hitting the devil's lettuce? That's an awfully red eye. Man, an entire river to boat through and Kenny manages to plow the croc. Nice driving, Mr. Magoo. I love these shots that make the croc look like a giant unflushed turd. Things are looking bleak for Kenny and Lisa. But don't worry, Kenny is a graduate from the Steve Irwin School of Croc Wrangling. By God, he's got him in the full Nelson! 2023 goals. Improve my JR. Oh, holy shit. It's an action figure on a crocodile. This is maybe the greatest thing I've ever seen. He's holding on for dear life, but Lisa's about to throw the bomb. Because it's dynamite. Smile, you son of a bitch. And smoked crocktail for everyone at dinner tonight. And freeze frame ending. Yeah, that's the stuff. So, what have we learned from Killer Crocodile 2? Well, for starters, that I'd have watched at least another five movies with Anthony Crenna fighting giant paper mache crocodiles. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I love this crap. I will always be a sucker for giant rubber monsters. Oh, and I learned you can totally replace your leading man with an action figure for difficult stunt scenes. <laughs> action figures don't have a union. But enough about that. Can this croc devour enough hapless humans to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Killer Croc is pretty decent. We're treated to multiple crocodile attacks. There's not a lot of variety here, but the kills are just gory enough to earn this one a respectable three barf bag rating. This one is a modestly sick flick. Looking for another killer croc flick? Then be sure to check out my review of the first killer crocodile. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.